Hello everyone, this is Matteo. I'm still the developer of the IP adapter extension for Comfy UI. And this is not the video that I wanted to release this week. So last time we talked about Face ID, a new IP adapter model for working with faces. Well, since then Tencent Lab released two new models, Face ID Plus and Face ID Plus V2. Unfortunately, in the span of just a few days, I had to change the IP adapter architecture twice. And since the workflow is now different compared to what we talked in the last video, I wanted to give you a quick update. Okay, let's start from what has changed. Now we have two main IP adapter nodes. One is IP adapter apply and the other is IP adapter apply face ID. The first is for all the previous models, including full face and plus face, while the second one is only for face ID models. As you can see, this one now has an inside face input. Let me show you how it works. Each face ID model has its own LoRa, so we need a LoRa loader model only, and you have to pay attention in selecting the right one. We start with face ID. We connect it to the main checkpoint and then to the IP adapter node. Then I need the IP adapter model. I select face ID because I have the face ID LoRa. Then we need the clip vision, inside face, and of course a reference image. Now we can go to the K sampler. Inside face doesn't need the face to be cropped really close to the frame, so this picture would actually work, but it is always a good idea to crop the image better. So I'm adding a crop node. This should be fine, so I'm connecting it to the IP adapter. I have a very simple positive prompt, close-up photo of a woman in a purple tuxedo in Tuscany, and let's see how it goes. The first time that you run the workflow, inside phase will take a few seconds to load, but after that it will be very fast. This is pretty good already, but the image is a bit dark. I think the LoRa is too strong, so we start with 0.6. Now it's much better. It always tends to make the person younger, so I'm also adding 35 years old in the positive. And this is our first result with face ID. Now, the base face ID model takes advantage of a second pass made with full face or plus face. So we are going to do that. The base face models are handled by the other IP adapter node, so I am including that. And I'm replicating this generation so we can see the difference. With Control shift v I get the nodes with all the pipe connections. Now for the second IP adapter I need a plus face model. We already have the clip vision. We use the same face. We connect the first IP adapter to the second and then to the K sampler. We need to lower the weight of the plus face model. I selected full face, not plus face, okay. And now to the generation. Now, not only the face is much closer to the reference, but you have a lot of parameters you can play with to get to a perfect result. First of all, of course, the weight of the plus face, and you can also tweak the time stepping. For example, I can stop at 0.6, in which case I can add a little weight. So the base face ID model is very powerful, not on its own, but when paired with plus face or full face. You can try the same with full face. And it's very difficult to say which one is better because it depends on the reference image, it depends on the checkpoint, and so you really just need to try them. So now let's see how face ID plus works. I duplicate the main generation. As IP adapter model, I need face ID plus. And since each model comes with its own LoRa, I also need to change the LoRa. Everything else is the same. I just need an output node. And let's see. So the face is very close, but it completely ignores our background while Face ID was able to put something in the background. 
so we may need to lower the weight a little. Let's try 0.8. Okay, this is very nice. As you can see, the image is less saturated compared to the other generations. Uh, this is not a bad thing because it means that the model doesn't burn the image. So we can probably lower the number of steps and also increase the CFG. And this will give us more contrast if you need it. So last example would be for Face ID plus V2. I need to select the model, change the LoRa. And unfortunately, at this stage, I have no way to know if you are using a V2 model. So you have to manually select Face ID V2. So we enable this option and we are ready to generate a new image. So actually this time we have a result that is close to this other one and for a reason. Face ID plus V2 takes the embeds from two sources. The first is inside side face and the second is the clip vision. And basically it matches the two embeds together for arguably a better result. What is interesting is that with the weight V2 option, you can calibrate the strength of the clip vision embeddings. So let me put back weight to one and weight V2 to 0.6. So with V2, we can fine tune our result uh, more or less the same we could do before with uh, the, the face ID base model together with a plus face or full face model with the difference that this time is all in one node. Let's see how they react to changing the prompt. For example, I want blonde hair. I'm increasing the weight a little. Let's see. Face ID plus reacted very well. The others probably need less weight. Let's try with 0.8. And now they are pretty much all blonde. What is important to note is that the weight for each IP adapter is very strong, so the likeness of the face will be good, while for a standard full face or plus face model, you would need to lower the weight even further. Okay, now since things are getting a little complicated with all these new nodes, I wanted to show you a couple of tricks that uh, I use all the times to streamline the workflow a little. The first one is templates. You can save a group of nodes into a template. For example, let's say that I want all the nodes needed for a face ID plus V2 generation. I'm adding the base node, the V2 model, clip vision, inside face, a reference image, and I also need the LoRa. Okay, at this point I can select all these nodes, right click on an empty area of the workflow and save selected as template. I call this IP adapter face ID V2. And now if I right click in the node templates menu, I'll find the collection of nodes that I've just saved. This is very useful and a real time saver. In the same menu, you'll find Manage, where you can uh, update or delete your templates. And if you want to streamline this selection of nodes even further, you can do that by selecting all the nodes that you want to group, then click on one on the nodes and convert to group node. Give it a title. And now you have all your IP adapter face ID plus V2 nodes grouped into one single node. And you can still change all the parameters, but everything is more compact and easier to manage. Now be very careful when grouping nodes because if we use two of these groups, we are loading all the models two times and you don't really want that. So group your nodes wisely. You can use this big group if you need to use the IP adapter only once, but if you need multiple instances of the same model, you need to keep all the load nodes outside of your group. So now let's make a comparison of all the face models that IP adapter offers. 
Okay, I've prepared this workflow that showcases most of the options that we have available for working with faces. In the first row, we have face ID, face ID together with plus face and face ID together with full face. In the second row, we have face ID plus and face ID plus together with full face. I'm not sure it is correct, but it works. So I wanted to give it a try. Then we have face ID plus V2 at weight 04, at weight 06 and at weight 1. In the last row, we have plus face alone and full face alone. One thing to note, as always, is that neither plus face or full face were able to place the subject into the context described in the positive prompt. Another thing that I've noticed is that none of them was able to catch the eye color, but that is probably easy to fix with a text prompt. And honestly, none of them is perfect, but we are getting there. Let's try with another face. I think that in this case, face ID together with plus face was the best option. Let's try another. Probably face ID with full face is the best now, but also face ID plus with full face is not bad. Face ID plus V2 is very natural. And I think that a weight of 0.6 is the best option overall. And in the last row we have the black sheep. Let's try with a guy. I need to change the prompt. Okay, the skin color is pretty much wrong for all of them. Face ID alone is really bad in this case. Face ID with full face is getting closer. Face ID plus with full face is decent. Face ID plus V2, I mean, it's okay, but not very close. Plus face and full face put the guy in a dungeon. Well, as I said before, there's rarely a clear winner. I'm making this workflow available so you can download it and make some tests, but it really varies a lot based on your reference image and also the checkpoint. Okay, I hope you found this content useful. Join my Discord if you want and let me know which face model you prefer. It's all for today and see you next time. Ciao.